Complex numbers are often seen as mysterious and abstract, existing in the realm beyond the reach of everyday mathematics. However, these numbers are in fact an essential part of our mathematical toolkit with applications in many fields including, but not exclusive to, quantum mechanics, relativity, electrical engineering, and my personal favorite, fractal geometry. Despite their importance in many fields of math and science, many people find the concept of complex numbers difficult to understand. To help remove some of the mysteries surrounding complex numbers, an alternate method of visualizing complex numbers is presented. The standard algebraic expression for a complex number looks like this, where A is the real component and B is the imaginary component. This expression is often visualized in a Cartesian coordinate system with the real component on the horizontal axis and the imaginary component on the vertical axis. This is all fine and good and very useful, but this is not the problem. Most of the confusion surrounding complex numbers comes from this guy here, the square root of negative one. It is often said that you can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real number. And this is technically true. Because of this problem, the square root of negative one is referred to as the identity of the imaginary numbers and is given the symbol i for imaginary. But we still haven't solved the problem. We have just given the problem a name. The square root of negative one is still somewhat of a mystery. So instead of visualizing complex numbers as a Cartesian coordinate system, we are going to visualize complex numbers as a two by two matrix. Here, the real component occupies the forward diagonal of the matrix and has the same sense, and the imaginary component occupies the backward diagonal and has the opposite sense. When you use this representation of complex numbers, something wonderful happens. Using the two by two matrix version of complex numbers, we can actually take the square root of both positive and negative numbers and get something that makes sense. To see how this works, let's start with an example. Let's say we want to take the square root of positive 25 and the square root of negative 25. In the two by two matrix version of complex numbers, the square root of positive 25 has two matrix solutions. One with positive fives on the forward diagonal and one with negative fives on the forward diagonal. In a similar manner, the square root of minus 25 has two matrix solutions. Here, you see we have fives on the backward diagonal, but they have the opposite sense, where one is positive and the other is negative. These two solutions are in fact complex conjugates of each other. In the two by two matrix version of complex numbers, the complex conjugate is a flip about the forward diagonal of the square matrix. Here is what the square root of one and the square root of minus one looks like in matrix form. The square root of one has two solutions, one and negative one, and the square root of minus one has two solutions, i and minus i. As you can see, when using the two by two matrix representation of complex numbers, you actually can take the square root of a negative number and get mathematical solutions that don't depend on the imagination. To prove that this is functionally identical to the algebraic form, I applied them to the famous Mandelbrot set fractal generator using the following formula. In terms of implementation on a computer, I only need two functions, one for matrix multiplication for the squaring and one for matrix addition. The computer code for this is actually quite trivial. Using this method, I'm able to generate all the beautiful Mandelbrot set and Julia set fractals that we know and love. Next, we are going to talk about Euler's formula. The algebraic expression for Euler's formula looks like this, where the cosine term is the real component and the sine term is the imaginary component. The two by two matrix implementation looks like this. Here you can see that the real component, the cosine term, is on the forward diagonal and has the same sense, and the imaginary component, the sine term, is on the backward diagonal and has the opposite sense. In computer science, this is referred to as a transformation matrix. This kind of formula is used in computer graphics all the time to generate rotations and circular motions. All of the animations that you see here on the right were created using this version of Euler's formula. Again, in terms of computer implementation, this method is very simple. 
Any application that uses complex numbers could easily benefit from the 2x2 matrix implementation of complex numbers. For more information on this topic, you can go to ResearchGate and read my preprint paper, Demystifying Complex Numbers. Of course, a similar thing can be done with quaternions, but I will save that for another video.